Hi, uh, Tuesday, uh, June 28th, 2016. Uh, Monaco 64 here, home of uh, alternative uh, economics and contrarian views. Yeah, it's around 10 p.m. Uh, London time. And uh, I just thought I'd make a video about something that's a little bit worrying, uh, not because uh, I'm for uh you know, Brexit, or I'm not, I'm just an observer, really, and uh, I've seen something that's a bit concerning, in my opinion, especially uh, for, you know, the order uh, of the United Kingdom and the public, uh, you know, public uh, co cohesion, if you'd like to say it. Uh, we've had today the first anti-Brexit uh, protests in London. There were a few thousand people there, I'd say, you know, two, three thousand people, not many people. They started out in uh, Trafalgar Square, uh, which is near Charing Cross Station, very uh, big tourist area, and then they walked over towards uh, the Houses of Parliament, which isn't that far away. And uh, they, you know, they were protesting for a few hours uh, late this afternoon, well, late this afternoon and throughout the evening. And uh, a lot of the people were younger people, even though I don't think they were all, you know, young, young people. And uh, you heard a lot of... Uh, like people come and make uh, small speeches. And one of the things I heard is that, uh, you know, they don't, they don't respect uh, the uh, results of the referendum, even though uh, the leave clearly won by 52% to 48. You know, if it had been the other way around, I'm sure um, the Remain camp would have uh, been fine and would have said, oh, this is democracy, you know, this is the, the rule of the majority, we won, too bad. But we, we get people, some people were saying now that, uh, oh, uh, if you uh, count uh, the number of eligible voters, only 36% of the population voted uh, to leave. Uh, and they said, well, you know, the referendum they had in Scotland a few years ago, they allowed 16-year-olds to vote, and they didn't allow, you know, 16-year-olds to vote in this referendum, even though, you know, the 18s to 24, uh, only 36% uh, bothered to go out and vote. And, uh, and then you had... A couple of MPs, uh, both conservative MPs, who came out uh, and made their own little speeches. And in my opinion, it looked like they were like urging these people to keep on, you know, doing this. And I, f I found that pretty uh, amazing. You know, they're trying to tell these uh, young people protesting that they should not respect. Uh, the referendum result, and that they should write to their MPs and complain that they want another vote. Uh, so, and then I started thinking, you know, David Cameron, he called for the referendum. Uh, he, he hasn't taken uh, the responsibility, you know, for following through with the result, even if it was a result he didn't want. He should already be um, activating this Article 50 of the European Union uh, Treaty or Constitution or whatever it's called to get, you know, take the United Kingdom out of the European Union. But he's decided to uh, not do it. He's going to uh, resign. He's resigned as a uh, leader of the Conservative Party. He's still in a caretaker prime minister, and it looks like it's going to take about, you know, three months to get a new leader. And there is a lot of speculation, of course, that Boris Johnson, who led the 
leave uh, campaign is going to be the next prime minister, even though there are some commentators uh, urging Theresa May to become to, you know, to contest and try to become the, you know, leader of the uh, conservatives and the, therefore prime minister. And she was pro uh, remain. So and even Boris Johnson himself, you know, he, when he made this, uh, you know, victory speech, even though he looked didn't look happy at all, you know, after the uh, the the result, uh, you know, on the morning of June twenty fourth, and uh, he says, you know, and I quote: "There's no need to haste uh, to start EU exit negotiations." You know, it's an article from, article from the uh, Guardian I'm reading here. And, um, you know, it doesn't go hand in hand with what uh, uh, young Claude Juncker, uh, president of the European EU Commission, uh, is saying. You know, he wants the UK to leave ASAP and activate this Article 50. So why doesn't David Cameron do it, you know? And... And now you're starting to see these anti-Brexit campaigners and protests and even MPs, you know, like urging them along. Uh, one of them was even uh, a, a conservative minister. Uh, so I don't know what uh, what they're they're playing at, uh, but uh, I, I don't see this ending well unless... You know, we the UK government activates uh, Article 50 ASAP. Uh, this is this is, could open a can of worms, and uh, we could see you know chaos you know uh, in the streets of the United Kingdom if this you know if uh, this doesn't happen, you know, especially with the anti-Brexit campaigners, uh, anti-Brexit uh, protesters starting to, you know, build up and uh, calling for a new referendum and saying that they they don't accept the referendum. So is the British establishment trying to uh, bring the new world order out of chaos? I don't know. It might. This might just be all, you know, a storm in a teacup, you know, uh, as far as my view is concerned. But I just like to warn people about what's going on. You know, uh, all the focus now is on the Conservative Party leadership, uh, you know, uh, race to see who's going to be the next prime minister. Now we have the Labour Party leader who's been you know, had a vote of no confidence by the M a Labour MPs. So the Labour Party as well has got, looks like no leader. While, you know, we should actually be activating this Article 50. So I don't know what they're playing at, but it doesn't uh, smell good. Uh, so I just thought I'd uh, warn people so um, they uh, can keep, uh, you know, up to date with what's going on in the UK. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.